The time has come. Greetings, and welcome to Call of Myth. Oh, this has been a long-awaited game, and the rollout, while bumpy, we are in the open trial period, where we can help make the game a better game. So, today, tutorial, we're going to be going through the basics of the game. Profile, we're just going to go across the screen, explain everything. Profile, you pick all your cool little things. Collection, see your cards, create new decks, right up here. For the cards, you currently, there are three factions, one of which is unavailable, humans. There are the Outer Gods faction, which gives you access to, well, the Outer Gods. There's the Old Ones faction, gives you access to Old One cards. Allies, which can be played in any deck. And then for each deck, you pick a Madness, which will affect your cards as they go insane. Going back out, we have the store, which I've already purchased their, uh, intro pack, which has allowed me to go ahead and unlock a couple leaders, get some extra cards. You can get those packs via in-game gold for $2.99. I determined it was best. I wanted to go ahead and support the development of the game, so I went ahead and did that. So going back, currently there are three types of gameplay available. The tutorial, which currently just walks you through this branch, where you can walk through the path here, complete the tutorial. This path is currently locked off, but we will get to that later. You do have a storybook here, which allows you to uncover text as you're going along. Tells you a bit about what's going on. Then we have PvE, which currently there is only normal mode, but it allows you to take your decks and test it against the AI. And there is PvP mode, which rating, currently off, but standard gameplay. You could go in, search yourself an opponent, and play against your opponent. We won't go ahead and actually go through that now, but... But let's go ahead and explain what's going on with the various cards. So for the cards, you have the magic cost in the top left, then for creatures, attack, defense, sanity, and then they'll have different traits. For the main important traits, we will go ahead and play some decks and explain them as we're going through, so we'll get to that in later videos. And if you hover over it, it gives you a nice little tooltip that explains what each of the cards does. You've got a rarity in the upper right hand corner. And I believe there are some uniques that have been put in. The unique I know of is an ally. Uniques might, it might still say 4x, but you're only supposed to be able to have one Kenzia. But cross here up on the top, or I'm not entirely sure what the red is. Then we've got green resources, which is what would allow you to craft. And then we have gems, which as of yet, I don't think has been mentioned what they're for either. But so, all right, let's go ahead and I can kind of explain the basics of gameplay if we go ahead and take a game into PvE. So we'll be going first. We start with three mana. Our opponent is on four, meaning they go second. And we're looking at what would be some good starting cards. Knives Throwing is our removal card. I don't think I want that that early. Dweller has an offering of four. I don't have anything with four health, so I'm going to get rid of that. We'll keep the Blood Bag and the uh, Hungering for Pain Madman. Starting off with two of the Hungering for Pain Madman is actually pretty interesting. What we're going to do is we're going to play the Blood Bag, and we're going to go ahead and end turn. Now what Hungering for Pain does is whenever creatures summon damage, they get their strength attack or their attack buff by one. Alright, so our opponent has the Madness... Let me hover over it there. Mania. So when a creature goes insane, which our desperate detective, you can see he's got a sanity of zero down there at the bottom. He immediately goes insane, triggers the madness, which reduces one of our cards cost by two. Now we're going to see the same thing happen with hunger for pain. He's going to come down because he's at zero. He's immediately going to reduce the cost for our opponent. Now the nifty thing that's going to go on here is now each time we deal damage to our own creatures... We're getting plus two because each of the Hungry for Pain are going up. So we'll take the trade here. He'll die. Terror will go up by one for our opponent. But then we've got a 3-1 Blood Bag here. We are out of Magicka. So we're going to go ahead and end turn. Who is here? Show yourself. Now Terror drops to zero at the end of each person's turn. Alright, so why did we gain health there and what just happened? So they traded into our blood bag, which had insignificant. Here, so we can hover a blood bag. He cleared off our blood bag by giving the in the detective a grenade, 
Whenever an insignificant creature dies, you can see our ability here, we gain one health. So while we start at low health, we're able to keep going. Now we found our final form, which is the War Bear. Whenever a friendly creature suffers damage and survives, this creature gains plus one to all stats. So we're gonna go ahead and play the War Bear down. War Bear has a little fist here in the bottom left hand corner of his uh, screen, you kinda see it? Means he's gotta be played up here in this melee row. But so like, this guy's gonna go ahead and bump in. Survive, so Bear's gonna get a buff. Then I'm just gonna go ahead and bump the blood bag. And we're out of Magicka, we're gonna go ahead and end turn. Opponent keeps drawing. Gives it a Colt, which means he went ahead and shot this guy, which wasn't the best move, because now he's buffed, because he lived. And each time you see him living, you see the bear just getting stronger and stronger. There's a reason this deck is known as the War Bears. Now I could trade into here, but I think we're gonna go ahead and use Knives Throwing. Go ahead and clear Tracker. Sorry Puppers, you're actually a really good boy. Then I would go and attack. We're gonna go ahead and send these two in. But I'm gonna go ahead and send uh, Swamp Dweller over here and use you Offering 4 the on the bear. So it's gonna hurt the bear by 4, but I was then able to draw a random beast card from my deck and I reduced its cost by 3. And triggered that, so he's now up to 8. We've dropped our opponent to 2. Go ahead, end turn. And we'll see if War Bears is able to clear. Use their ability. Now it's gonna get charged, so it's gonna clear our Gunslinger. But that's gonna be game. So we didn't actually end up using our ability all that often, but that's the basics. That's Call of Myth. For our next tutorial, we'll begin going into deck building, looking at how to build a deck, and explaining kinda how the board works, cause the two are really kinda intertwined. But for now, Farkas says, may you have the best of vibes, and may you stay suitably sane.